I would say I picked Hopkins because I felt like I wanted a place that checked all the boxes of research opportunities, clinical excellence. You know, you can do anything from Hopkins. But also, I wanted a place that had a really good residency culture where I felt like I could have a residency family and have the work-life balance <laughs> that I desperately need in life. <laughs> As a former resident in this program, I can share firsthand that this is a phenomenal group uh, to be part of. Our faculty are a very diverse and broad faculty in all subspecialties, and we have a depth of faculty in every single one of those divisions. Our faculty are so incredibly supportive. A lot of them did residency here, and we also have a lot of faculty that are coming from other residency programs and training environments, so they bring a wide variety of experiences. Everyone's really invested in making sure that their residents are well-educated and prepared for the career that they want and are really invested in mentorship, and it's just an incredible place to be. We take great pride in the fact that we've developed many leaders in otolaryngology and beyond. We have leaders of cancer centers, we have leaders of academic departments, and we have leaders in non-academic roles. And I think the most prominent thing is that this is just part of our culture. There's a leadership curriculum that the residents participate in, and they often partner with institutional leaders and departmental leaders in instituting change. Last year, Ali and I were on a committee along with a few of our attendings, and the focus of that committee was to talk about our rotations, future of rotations, etc. And so we really felt like we were at the forefront of a lot of ideas and a lot of changes. Important thing to note is they actually actively seek out our uh, our feedback, especially yeah. during like Zandi's listening sessions, where they're yeah. scheduled and comes in, gives us updates on what's been going on, and asks if we have any feedback. I think that's really important to have like that FaceTime on a scheduled basis. Coming from a program like this, you will absolutely establish deep, long-lasting friendships, relationships, partnerships, collaborations, projects that are still ongoing. There will always be some tie that connects you to so many people after coming from Johns Hopkins. You're going to stand on a very strong foundation and then you get to do all the cool stuff that, you know, I'm doing and other people are doing. So. I think one of the strengths of the otolaryngology head and neck surgery residency at Hopkins is that everybody gets research experience and everybody gets a, an excellent clinical experience. Often medical students come to this process thinking research means necessarily being at a bench and operating a pipette. We welcome that. We have lots of that here. That's certainly a strength. But we also have robotics research research in public health, head and neck cancer biology, the neuroscience of the auditory system and vestibular system, uh, and many other opportunities. A lot of the surgeries that we do are outpatient, and there's this move towards having these surgeries be done at outpatient surgery centers as opposed to being in a hospital. And it creates a challenge for residents because if you are responsible for being on call at a hospital, it can be challenging to then get to another site. So I think our program has been really good about making the appropriate adjustments so that residents can see how an ambulatory surgery center runs. They're a little different than the academic hospitals and inpatient operating rooms because there's a little more of a focus on efficiency, and finding that balance between efficiency and education for a resident is really important and I'm really glad that we get to have that experience. When I truly think about like every morning what gets me out of bed, I think it is that opportunity to learn. I know I'm going to be working with an attending who's going to be giving me feedback right away and I can see myself improving knowing that everything that I'm learning is going to make me a more technically excellent surgeon, a better doctor in terms of decision making, ultimately with the ultimate goal of giving excellent care to the patients. One of the reasons why I chose Hopkins, or another reason why you should choose Hopkins, <laughs> is uh, the surgical complexity, right? Like, we see things here that not every place is capable of doing. We see a lot of the procedures that are at the forefront, at the cutting edge, that is just not widely done, but will be probably the standard of practice in, in a decade or two. I, I know leaving Hopkins, there's not going to be a lot that phases me in my practice because I'll have <laughs> seen something that's more complex, that's more extreme here. We all feel we're called to make the specialty better to the benefit of the patients who are suffering. I think what we pride ourselves most in with our research program is dedicating what we do to making the specialty better and relieving that suffering. I think you can go to any residency program and learn how to do a neck dissection, learn how to do a tonsillectomy, learn how to do a laryngectomy, but all the other things that are important to being a successful physician are things that I've learned while being at Hopkins. 
the world is your oyster after coming from Hopkins and you really can do such amazing stuff that you probably never had planned to do. Hopkins sets you up for success by giving you the skill sets you need for the job you want. We want our trainees to come out and be more than just competent. We want to train excellent clinicians, excellent educators, and excellent academic surgeons.